Hey guys, my name is Casey, but I also go by Too Many Miatas on Instagram. I'm making this video to kind of put the word out there that you can actually put a standalone ECU in your NA6 or NA8 Miata for like less than 400 bucks, which is honestly going to be half the cost of the next equivalent, probably a Mega Squirt Plug and Play 2 or something similar. Disclaimer, I'm not sponsored or affiliated with Speedwino at all. I just love the project and I really want to get more word out there, that way more people know that they can put a standalone ECU in their Miata for a really, really budget price. One more disclaimer as well. This is not meant to be a foolproof step-by-step -step guide to installing the Speedwino ECU in your car. It's more so to give you a brief introduction to the Speedwino ECU and to give you background information. That way you're not starting on square one when you decide to install it. There are Speedwino manuals, MX-5 plug-and-play manuals, there are forums, wikis, there's even a Slack chat that you can use to talk to everyone and get answers to your questions. Please, please, use the manuals, use the forms, use all of the information that's out there that's given to you, use the wikis, use all of that, and read up as much as you can. Because honestly, the more reading that you do, the more learning that you do, the easier it's going to be in the end. The, the more you're going to remember, the faster it's going to be, just the, the better it's going to go. Trust me. It's going to require a couple things to set it up and install it in your Miata but it's only going to be two sensors, unplugging one fuse, running one vacuum line, and then you're done. You also have to add an AFR gauge if you really want to, which you really, 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 really should, but it's not required to run the ECU on your car. It's going to be required to really do any tuning whatsoever, but I'm not including it in the final cost of the ECU itself because really you don't consider Megasquirt to be a thousand dollar ECU you consider it to be an eight hundred dollar ECU because that's the price but you would still need an AFR gauge with that mega squirt so it's really more like a thousand dollar ECU but we're just gonna go with mega squirt being an eight hundred dollar ECU because that's its actual price and Speedwino's price is gonna be about three hundred dollars three fifty depending on how many sensors and how many things you wire up essentially I've been running Speedwino on my Mazda Miata for the last year and a half now the one you see here and it's honestly been great there have been a few kinks that I've had to get over with the help of the community and the forums and everything like that but nothing that I couldn't ultimately get over the car runs with an AEM AFR gauge E36 VTPS sensor GM one bar map sensor GM IAT sensor uh, Mishimoto dual fans um, I deleted the carb canister running at about 14 degrees timing with 13 14 AFRs most of the time and the, the thing rips. It honestly feels better than stock. And if you guys are uh, worried about kind of like emissions testing in your state, I can honestly say that I was able to pass emissions here in Oregon with flying colors. We have only um, exhaust emissions testing, but I ran uh, a test with like uh, 10 to 11 AFRs, which was really, 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 really shitty. And I shouldn't have even went to DEQ with those AFRs, but I was just kind of curious to see what it was what it would result in and I went to test my emissions with that and didn't pass at all but by tuning the AFRs to 14 7 you know normal AFRs that was able to result in me passing emissions and DEQ with flying colors I didn't have to change my cat I didn't have to change my plugs didn't have to change anything other than just the AFRs that I was tuning for essentially so it was really 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 simple and honestly amazing so DEQ and emissions are not something that you have to worry about at all. Speedwino's GitHub or the Speedwino forums and downloading a firmware version and going to the reference folder and then base tunes and then there's going to be a bunch of different base tunes that you can already download and look at for free on Tuner Studio just to kind of get used to all of the settings and get associated with everything. Once you've taken a look at the base tunes and kind of gotten yourself associated with the program tuner studio and kind of seeing what you're going to have to do then you can go ahead and purchase your mx5 plug and play speedwino and you can also purchase from them an intake air temperature sensor one of the sensors that you're going to need to wire up it's only going to run you about 22 bucks and i would honestly recommend picking it up from them since it'll be a guaranteed foolproof working sensor once you've got those two things you're also going to need to order a uh, throttle position sensor since na6 miatas only come with an open or closed normal TPS sensor rather than a variable TPS sensor that lets you know how open or how closed. So you can actually pick up a BMW E36 VTPS sensor off of eBay for around 25 bucks. 
and then you're going to need an adapter to adapt it to your throttle body. You can actually print one, like 3D print one, out of, you know, PLA or any kind of material that you're looking to do it out of, and just attach it yourself via that. Or you can pick up a kit from Flying Miata that comes with an adapter to bolt directly to your throttle body. I went with this because at the time I didn't actually have a 3D printer. Now I do, and I kind of regret spending $50 on an adapter that I could have just printed for myself for literally, like, 30 cents. So honestly, I would recommend either 3D printing the adapter or kind of searching for someone that can 3D print an adapter for you. I'm probably going to start 3D printing adapters and listing them on eBay just to make it easier for people to kind of pick them up easily and not have to wait and contact people and such. But once you've got those two sensors and your Speedwino ECU in your hands, you're also going to need some vacuum line, which the Speedwino ECU should come with a little bit of vacuum line, but if it doesn't come with enough, you can always pick up some yourself. And once you've got all of those things, then you can start actually installing your ECU, which is honestly extremely simple. It's almost like Mazda knew that they were going to be changing the speed, their ECU to speed density because they left a, um, a little intake port that you can use directly for your vacuum line on the intake manifold. There's actually two ports right here. One of them stock is used by the uh, carbon canister. If you delete that, then you can use this vacuum port right here. But if you don't want to use that one, you can use this one, like the guide tells you, and run it directly to your ECU, which will be for your manifold absolute pressure sensor. Once you've got that one routed up, you're also going to have to wire up your throttle position sensor, which is honestly going to be extremely simple. It's just three wires. It, it shouldn't be that hard. And then once you've got your VTBS sensor wired up, you can wire up your inlet temperature sensor, which is just going to be using two wires off of your uh, stock math plug, the ground and the signal wire from the math, and you're just going to splice into those wires or even purchase a connector, like a, an extra math connector and kind of make your own kind of wiring harness for your IAT sensor, and you're going to want to put your IAT sensor in your intake piping, kind of thread it into your intake piping, close to the throttle, the throttle body. And once you've got that close to your throttle, throttle body, it's going to be able to tell you the intake air temperature of the air that's entering into your intake manifold. And you also have a manifold absolute pressure sensor that'll be telling you what the pressure is in your intake manifold. Plus a VTPS sensor that'll be telling you how open your throttle is versus the stock one that would have just told you if it's open or closed. Next you'll have to remove the starter signal fuse. That way the Speedwino ECU can use the stock fuel pump wiring to prime the fuel pump and control it and do all of that. There are alternative ways to do fuel pump control, but you really, really shouldn't have to do that. Once you've got all of that wired up, you've essentially got your standalone ECU installed in your car. Once you've got your ECU installed, then you can actually install the firmware or software onto the ECU that lets it communicate with your laptop and your car. Installing firmware on the Speedwino ECUs used to be kind of difficult because you used to have to download the Arduino IDE, some other programs, and essentially kind of download all the drivers and make it to where you could communicate with your Arduino using your computer, then load the firmware onto it, yada yada. Luckily though, Josh Stewart developed a program called Speedy Loader, which kind of gets rid of all of that nonsense and essentially makes it to where you can use one single EXE, Speedy Loader, one single EXE, and load firmware onto your, your ECU just via this, whatever firmware version you want to, all that kind of stuff. It's super simple, but if you want to do the original way, you can still download your Arduino IDE and download the firmware from the GitHub or from the forums manually and do it the manual way, which is still possible. But I wouldn't really recommend doing that if, unless you have to. The only time that I would use the Arduino IDE to load firmware nowadays would be if you're trying to load a custom firmware or kind of custom code, something along those lines. And since the project is even open source, the firmware and all of the code is listed on GitHub for people to even make pull requests, which is just kind of like an edit request. And basically, people are out there kind of adding features to this ECU and adding code and contrib contributing and kind of making it a better product for free. So you can actually add features to your ECU for free, like warm-up enrichment auto-tune. I actually added this feature to my ECU just by adding a custom firmware and uploading it to the Arduino, and it works 110%. I can make a video and a guide showing you guys how to do this if you'd like, but it's honestly super, super simple, and it's crazy that we're capable of 
adding features to our ECU, basically to our vehicle, just by messing around with the code. Like that's what this Arduino and this ECU gives you the capability of being able to do. I'm not the best programmer, I'm not a good coder by any means, but just being able to do that makes me want to be inspired to kind of learn and do all of those things. Along with being able to add features to your ECU just via the firmware and downloading code and uploading your own code, you're actually able to add Bluetooth directly to your ECU just by wiring up four wires in an HC06 Bluetooth module. There's plenty of guides on the Speedweedo wiki and the forms, but what it involves is four wires, TX to RX, RX to TX, 5 volt to the VCC connection on the Bluetooth module, and then ground to the ground connection on the Bluetooth module. And you can even grab an old PC power supply and steal one of these connectors to make it even easier on yourself to wiring it up. It's a super, super simple mod, and then you're able to add Bluetooth functionality to your ECU and connect your phone or your tablet, and you can add you know, miles per hour to your dashboard, tons and tons of features. You're able to use MS Droid on your phone, Real Dash on your phone, or your Android tablet. You're able to do so many things just by adding Bluetooth to your ECU. And an HC06 Bluetooth module only costs less than $6. $6 to add all of that functionality to your ECU. Plus, you can wire it directly to the Arduino that sandwiches to the PCB. That way, if you for some reason mess up the soldering or the wiring to your Arduino, you can just order another Arduino, one of these $10 little microcontrollers, and replace it. That way you're not messing up your $300 ECU, your expensive ECU. You're only messing up the cheap, reusable Arduino. It's honestly an incredible solution.